Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's having a nice fall evening. Tonight, we've got the great pleasure of having Doug Campbell with us. Doug works with uh, Rick Sadler uh, at Hit or Miss, uh, not Hit or Miss, Hit, hit or Run uh, Candlesticks. Rick was one of my first private training students, and as you probably have heard me mention many times before, he was the one that actually, uh, after coming down for a weekend in uh, Houston, from he came down from Alaska, came back a couple months later and said, take a look at the eight exponential moving average. He's the one that kind of brought the T-line uh, to us and has, has worked very successfully. And he, he runs a very successful uh, uh, website now doing a different uh, trading strategy with candlesticks. And Doug works with him and uh, has a very good reputation, has lots of good feedback uh, about uh, the information that he provides for, for traders. So with that, Doug, welcome to the Candlestick Forum. We're, we're anxious to see your information tonight. Thank you, Steve. I, I'm, I've got to tell you, I'm, I'm a little bit, um, well, I'm more than a little bit. I'm humbled to be here. Um, <clears throat> my first... I rem my first uh, foray into trading, um, getting involved in candlesticks, involved one of your books. So <laughs> I do appreciate it. So it's really humbling to be right. here. <clears throat> um, I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. And please, um, this is, I'm really informal. Uh, one of the things that's awesome is is I'm very familiar with, with um, Omnovia <clears throat> and its quirks and problems. So feel free to ask your questions at any time. Now, I'm going to do just a few really quick slides, and then I want to jump into the charts because I really want to spend the time there. So feel free to ask your questions if you have a chart that you want to look at because I, I, I really have um, – what I like to do is spend my time helping people see a chart differently, learn to read that price action, listen, listen to what the market is telling you, and learn to follow it. And that's been extremely successful for me over the years. And it wasn't at the beginning. I can tell you that I made about every mistake in the book when it came to trading. It took me a long time to get this figured out. Um, but I've been doing it now 27 years. And, <clears throat> you know, ran my own business, did my own thing. Um, and I've now been trading um, full time for you know more than 12 years. In fact, it's crossed over to 13 now, um, and just have just been really blessed to have been involved in it so long and meeting so many great people in this industry. It's it's been a blast. Now, I, I'm a real big believer in price action and price patterns, and I use something I call naked charts. Um, and I'll show you here in a little bit. They're just, it is an absolute naked chart. We make a lot of jokes about that in the room. Um, <clears throat> people giving me a hard time for trading naked. But I, uh, years ago, I gave up most of uh, the indicators and everything out there and just started to focus on price action. And all of a sudden, my trading improved. So, um, like I say, I have a passion for helping people with this. I, I've been through the tough times, and I like to help people move past that. So if you guys have questions or something, feel free to um, give me give me a, a shout here, and we'll see if I can answer your question. Um, my greatest aha moment in trading came when I realized how important price was. You know, one of the things we often get caught up in as traders is trying to build that. Uh, in fact, I, I'll just tell you that I wasted years trying to build that perfect combination of indicators, that perfect, uh, looking for that perfect scan to give me the trade that I was looking for. And if, if you've been involved in that yourself, um, I can save you some time. It might burst a bubble here a little bit, but there's no perfect setup out there. Um, and if you can just strip all that stuff off and learn to watch price, price will tell you virtually everything that you need to know about a trade. So I keep things really simple. 
um, I'm a price action guy. Candlesticks, support and resistance and trends are extremely important to me. Um, if, if, I have, um, if I have any talent as a trader at all, it's, it's seeing support and resistance and trend. I've spent years doing this. Um, you show me a blank chart and I can see every support and resistance line and every, every trend that's been in that stock almost instantaneously. And it helps me see what or read what the market is doing, what that stock wants to do. So I'm really big into price patterns, and, and I'm going to show you something called volatility stops. That's really what I'm going to teach tonight. And I spent, um, I spent over a year testing um, this very simple indicator called volatility stop because it really helps people um, struggling to identify support resistance and trend helps them identify that, helps them to find a place to set their stop loss and manage and plan their trades. So we're going to spend quite a bit of time on that as well as a couple of price patterns. So here's, a, here's an example of, of one of my charts with the volatility stop on it. And you can see how clearly and cleanly it helps identify um, trends and price support, price resistance. And I'm going to show you how to set that up and um, get you going with that if you're interested in it. This is how I normally look at a chart. Um, I don't use um, any indicators for about 99% of my trades. Um, I follow price action. And you can see with a very clean chart, and by the way, I highly recommend um, I went through the whole phase where I had the fancy, you know, multicolored charts, black and white, I mean, black background, multicolored candles, um, all kinds of indicators um, on those charts. And I can tell you, um, I can show you my results. Um, that lost me money. When I cleaned up my charts and went back to something just completely basic like this, black and white candles, white background, all of a sudden price patterns just popped off the screen to me. I could see them. I could see support and resistance. I could, I, if I watched real close, I could see where the market wanted to go. And all I had to do was learn how to follow it. So we're going to talk about that tonight. Um, here is a, a pattern that is, is my pattern, and we'll talk a little bit about this pattern tonight. Um, I call it pop out of the box. And really, all it is is a very tight consolidation um, that requires a minimum of four days in a tight consolidation. And once that price pops out of there, what it's doing is it's giving us a very clear indication that there are no sellers underneath there. And if it pops to the top, that's buyers stepping in, and we just have to learn to follow that trade. And you can see in this chart right here, there were no false readings on that at all. Um, and I can tell you that um, I closed the trade right in front of all the right way options members trading this chart, WTW, using options for a 333% gain. So it, it makes a real big difference if you learn to just follow along with a simple chart like this. So tonight, hey, I'm going to give everyone this ebook. I, and there's nothing fancy about this ebook. Um, but the reason I'm giving that away, there's the link. You can go there, get the ebook. Um, it, it's going to give you background and follow up on what I'm going to teach you tonight or what I'm going to talk about tonight with a volatility stop. It also has links inside of it that can get you um, this TC2000. Um, if anybody uses TC2000, how to set up a, uh, a simple scan to find trending charts, really easy to do, and build what I call a qualified watch list. Uh, from there, um, we also have a PDF in here that you can set this up, okay? You can set this up in uh, your thinkorswim charts and use this indicator there. And build qualified scans, um, how to put together a qualified scan. Uh, there's a PDF in there for that as well. And 
there is a link to my YouTube channel. You can see um, I'm on YouTube um, where I've done um, five, they're about 20 minute classes to back up this. And if you need some more time, some, some more education on it, you can go there and just watch those. They're free um, to help you learn this indicator and how to follow along and use what I call, um, you know, that strategy for consistent profits. Because if you want to learn, if you want to trade, how many in here would say their goal is to trade full time? Their goal is to tell the boss goodbye. I want to trade full time. And what we have to learn to do is give up this idea of hitting home runs all the time and chasing around all of this, all of all of the uh, black box systems and all. We need to find a way to be consistent, consistent. Because we have a set amount of bills that we have to pay every month, right? Well, to give you an idea, I've, I've put two kids through college and supported my family for now 13 years trading full time, doing this kind of simple trading. And it really does work if you buckle down into it. And you guys, by the way, you can follow me anywhere. Just look up Right Way Options on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. LinkedIn or stock twits. I'm posting in those places all the time. Um, so feel free to stop in. Every morning, if you subscribe to my um, YouTube channel or Facebook, I produce a morning video. And that morning, in that morning video, does not have a download. The link for the ebook doesn't work. I tested it before I came in. It went straight to the page to do that. Sometimes you might have to copy and paste uh, the link in your uh, browser and then click on it. Uh, we have that same Let problem. Me, um, just a second. Let me fix this problem for you guys. Let's see if this will get you to that link that will get you to the ebook. That should do it. Maybe my problem is I converted it to one of those short links to make it easy. <coughs> Every morning I produce a video that, um, every single morning, I produce a video. Oh, thank you, Dee. That um, I post uh, prior to the market opening as well as a blog post on um, what I do for my market preparation every day. And it's free to everyone. So please, if, if you're interested in that, um, just go to those things and subscribe. There's no cost. And you'll receive that video every single morning. It's short, about 10 minutes long, as I go through the market and um, help you prepare for the day. So that is the end of my presentation. I want to get right to some charts. Has anybody be, been trading SQ? And by the way, feel free to throw your charts up there that you want to look at. We can do that. SQ has just been one of those charts that has produced trade after trade after trade after trade. And it's been one of those easy charts to trade. It just moves up nicely and cleanly. So you can see in this chart just completely naked, nothing on it but support and resistance lines that I've drawn so that I can see what's, go what's going on in price. <clears throat> and if you want to see proof of when I've called these trades, just go on to uh, Stock Twits because I've posted this chart probably a dozen times um, when I've entered trades here on um, SQ. And you can see it's just produced and produced and produced this entire year and just continues to do that. So I'm going to throw on the volatility stop. Okay. Now the volatility stop, here's the setting for TC2000. And all it is, is there's nothing fancy about it, okay? I don't sell this thing. I don't want to sell this thing. I don't, any, none of that. It's, this is free to everyone. 
there's there's nothing um, fancy with this at all. Okay, yeah, it does look like parabolic SAR. You are correct. It does look like par parabolic SAR, but it is not. Um, in fact, it's way different than parabolic SAR. Um, it's just an average true range, and I've over a year's worth of testing, I found that this 10 period is one of the best for me for the way I trade, swing trade. Yeah, Greg, if you get the ebook um, and the link that's above, um, you can download um, the entire code for TOS. It's in the ebook. There's a link for a PDF so that you can download the entire thing and make it available to you in your toss charts. And then the multiplier is 1.5. Okay, so really, really simple. And then I just set mine to red and green uh, just because it's easy. Um, but what you can see here is it shows me trend. Now, notice one of the hardest things that people struggle with um, in reading price action is understanding support and resistance. And you can see how we break out. These red dots here are showing me price resistance. We break out of that resistance, and we can see how this flips over and shows me trend. Same thing here. We're red. We have price resistance. Stay out of this trade. And then we flip over and move green. Now, I'm going to suggest to you what you want to do is what you want to do is wait for the low risk entry into that trade. And I just realized I didn't start my um, drawing tools, so give me just a second here, and I'll have my drawing tools up. But what we want is the stock breaking out. See how we went from red to green here? We move up. I don't chase this move up. What I do is I wait for the pullback to price support. I wait for a buy signal. One of the mistakes I made for years and years and years was anticipating a turn, trying to nail the entry. You get the perfect entry. Anybody ever try? I mean, you guys try that? Trying to get that part, man, I, trying to nail it down to the, you know, the penny. Um, waste of time. Absolute waste of time. If you let the chart tell you where it wants to go, wants to go and then prove itself that it's going to go that direction, you can enter right here and have a high winning potential trade. You wait for the stock to pull back, test support, bounce off of that support, see buyers stepping in. I never enter a trade without a buy signal. I am not worried about catching the bottom, and I am not worried about catching the top. I want to catch this middle part. That's where the money is, is in that middle part. So if you just wait for that trade to trigger, you can follow these trades up. And you can see how easy it is to do this. Now this was my last trigger. This is an actual trigger, an alert. I color my alerts a pink <clears throat> so I can spot them real quick on my chart. That alert, this was um, a week ago Thursday. Remember when we had the 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 big scare in the market and everything rolled over and then rever and SQ reversed and came right back up. That triggered into the trade. Um, a lot of folks are still in this position. And that's exactly right on that day is when I posted it out there on stock twits for everybody to see as a potential. Okay. So I'm going to start this recorder. Hopefully it doesn't mess anything up. Shouldn't just so I can have these drawing tools. So what we want is we want to see that stock break the resistance. So if we have a price resistance here, we want to see that stock price break that resistance, and we flip over from red to green, and then we pull back. We're looking for that pullback or, just as good, a nice tight consolidation. And then we wait for the buy signal. If we do that, you will find that your um, win-loss ratio will just go way up. I mean way up. Now, <clears throat> I am, you ask anybody in my trading room, I'm extremely picky on the trades. 
I don't trade everything. I don't try to trade everything. I don't want to trade everything. I want to trade stocks that are moving with the direction of the market. Mm. Okay. Uh, this is uh, uh, um, TC2000 charting here. <clears throat> if you guys don't use TC2000, highly recommend it. It's awesome. Um, it, it, it saves you all kinds of energy in your trading, um, all kinds of time in finding stocks. Um, I trade through Thinkorswim, but I got to tell you guys, uh, um, the efficiency that you gain with TC2000 over Thinkorswim charts is astonishing. And if you're going to be in business as a trader, you need efficiency. And this helps us with that efficiency. So here's a list. Let me show you this list. And there's nothing fancy here. This is a list of my stocks. It's my watch list. Okay? I don't run scans every day. I don't need to run scans every day. Because what I do is I find qualified stocks. What's a qualified stock? A stock that meets my qualifications for price, meets my qualifications for volume, and there's only one more thing, and that is that the stock is trending. And I find a trend by using a very simple scan. It's the 34 exponential moving average has been trending up 20 days. That's it. And in, in the ebook that you can that you've got, you actually get the code for the TC2000 scan for that. Nothing fancy. Okay, it's in there. So <clears throat> that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking only for trending stocks that are moving with the market. And then I put those stocks in a list. Now, this list here, you can see I've got 278 stocks listed in this list. Let me tell you how I got this list. This is my options focus list for October. I got this by just going to the CBOE. They, they produce a list every month of the options with uh, stocks with the highest volumes in it. I sort the list and take the top 250 or so, put them in a list, and that's what I trade. I don't want to waste time looking at stocks, you know, as an option trader. I don't want to waste time looking at stocks that have terrible options. So only these qualify for me. And then I create little sorts in this list. And let me explain what these little sorts are. This sort right here is the stock has been trending, the light green there underneath the symbol. It says, it says the 34 EMA has been trending 20 days on these stocks. So I'm only interested in looking at those, trending with the market. This is the second one here is that the price is currently above the volatility stop. So if I go through this list, you're going to find chart after chart that I have marked up that I'm preparing to trade. If I pull this back, I'm going to go back to my naked chart here, pull this back, look at WDC here. You can see WDC is producing a wedge pattern and running up here for a test. Now this is not ready to trade. It's setting up for a potential trade. So way ahead of time before a stock breaks out or something like that, if the stock is trending, it lands in my list, it's marked up, and I'm preparing for the next trade. I float through this list about three times a day looking for the next trade. So I've got a bunch of charts on here that are not marked up. And let me just show you what I would do to mark up this chart. And it's really, really simple. It takes no time at all. First, I look at the chart. Obviously, it is trending. Stock is moving up. And I start looking for places that showing me price support and resistance. And I draw this chart up. That simple. And if I look right here, I have a little resistance area. See how we're creating this really tight little consolidation right here? What I will normally do is grab this little tool right here, draw a little box around it, just so it's highlighted. And right here, this could become an alert. The stock popping up through there is something I'd be looking for. If I throw my volatility stop indicator on there, 
Notice that we've crossed from red to green. We've pulled back. And what did we do? We held price support with a beautiful morning star signal right there. Bullish signal responding to trend, responding to support. And now we've got a nice little consolidation where we can potentially enter this trade as soon as it breaks out. Because we have a, a, a line right here right underneath it saying, isn't it? Isn't that telling us right there that nobody wants to sell this below this level? At least for now. So all I have to do is wait for the buyers to make a decision. And then I follow. That's all I got to do. It really is that simple. Um, yes, the code... <clears throat> the code is in the ebook. The code is in the ebook. So very, very clean, very, very simple. Now the reason I'm flipping back and forth um, with TC2000, I'm able to tile charts together. So I can go from my naked chart where I, can, I just want to focus on price. And if I need to pull that indicator in, I can pull that indicator in with just one click and it's right there. It works for Forex. It works for futures. I've even traded this right in front of folks just to prove my point. It works even on a five-minute chart trading a futures right in front of the, the members of Rightway Options. And so far when I've done that, we only do that on really, really slow days, <clears throat> so far I've not had a losing trade doing it. Any time frame. It works. Any time frame. So let's take a look at a few other charts, charts that might be setting up. <clears throat> Here's Cree. Now a bunch of our, our members have been trading Cree. Can you guys see why? Can you guys see the patterns? If I go to the naked chart and mark this up, can you guys see this pop out of the box pattern? The tight consolidation right there? All we needed was an alert above there to let us know when the stock was ready to move. We've got those patterns everywhere in this chart. Because we've cleaned up the chart, we can see it. See how easy support and resistance is to spot if we have a clean chart? <clears throat> Currently, right way options is in a trade on this. Right now, I believe we're up about 30% on, on this trade right now. So as we go through this list, you're going to find that there's chart after chart that I've marked up. Valero. Anybody like Valero here? Pop out of the box patterns. And all we're doing in this chart is we're moving up, consolidating back to trend. Moving up, consolidating back to trend. Moving up, consolidating back to trend. And can you guys see there is an alert up here, and that one is trying to pop through the top of that box. If we throw the volatility stop on there, notice how clean that chart is. You literally could have been in this trade from right here, placed your stop loss, Right at that dot or just below that dot. I always put my, my um, stop loss is going to be below that dot. And follow this chart all the way up. Marshall, would I have entered the inter that at an intraday chart? Oh, often I do. Often I will buy it right on the pop of the box. I did not buy this today because I'm already in a bunch of trades. I didn't buy it today. I'm, I'm actually taking profits um, as we move toward the weekend here. And um, I'll be looking at this, watching this really closely for the next few days because I may enter. Notice that it doesn't matter. If, if you miss this trade or don't take this trade right here, look what happens a lot of times. We move up. What did we do? We pulled back. And then buyer stepped in there. Stayed above the volatility stop. There's your buy signal right there. So you don't have to catch the perfect entry. 
as long as you're in a stock that's trending with the trend of the market, just wait for the next entry. Good question. Um, on do I exit at resistance? If I see a major resistance above, I will probably be taking some profits. I, I, I use a strategy where I enter a trade and then I, I scale out of the trade. So for example, you know, if we moved up into here, I get a certain percentage gain on this and I'm going to take part of the trade off. Elite, it's in the um, ebook that you can receive how to set it up. This is you can it's how to set it up on the vol the volatility stop, how to set it up in TC two thousand, also how to set it up in toss. Very very simple and easy way to see support and resistance, and we can just go through chart after chart. Here's another chart that triggered today. Pop out of the box. Moving trend, there's my alert, boink, popped right through there. See how clean and simple that is? And it's, it's really actually easier when you even remove the volatility stop and just look at the chart. Look how simple and clean that is to see what the, what the stock wants to do. It's moving up. VRSN, VRSN moving up, nice little trend. There you go. Here was a great resistance breakout right there. You guys see the resistance breakout, the pullback, the test support. All you needed to find that, either if you didn't catch that first entry, is an alert right here to catch it when it broke after the pullback. If we put the vol stop on that, look at how it called the trade. There's your break, here's your pullback, entry into the trade. Nothing fancy. So in this list, this is my option list, I can run down through here, I, I guarantee you, I can always find more stocks than I can possibly trade. Just simply following something this simple in the trading. Uh, Jim, yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Jim's going to mention something here. I'll keep talking until you come on, Jim. Um, so just take a look at how simple and easy. Here's another one that triggered today. Look at this beautiful trend in Texas Instruments. How simple it was to see when we crossed over resistance came back to support, and then buyers stepped in here. And notice all the way up, one trade, you could have handled this trade all the way up. Here's a great pop out of the box. Let me get that naked so those dots aren't in the way. Very tight, four bars minimum, popping out of that tight consolidation, moving higher. Simple, clean easy to see and read. Thank you, Jim, for posting that. So if I'm going to be trading stocks other than, other than options, I don't change anything. I am extremely simple in my trading. Now, I, I will admit I am very, very picky about the trades I take. Either the trade, I call it making the trade come to me. Because I mark up this chart and I wait for the next entry. I don't have to worry about chasing a trade. I don't have to do any of that. Either the trade comes to me or I don't trade it. So <clears throat> what you're going to find if you look through this list, not one of these, that are marked up here are trending down. I'm not trying to catch a bottom. Don't even look at those. Don't care. Do not care to try and catch a bottom. 
I want to move with the chart that's moving up. Have you guys ever seen um, the movie What About Bob? Anybody seen that movie? One of my favorite movies. I think it's Bill Murray is one of those guys that cracks me up. And What About Bob? <clears throat> He's a guy with all kinds of phobias and stuff like that. He's out on a sailboat. <clears throat> it's called What About Bob? Bill Murray. He's out on a sailboat. And he's scared to death to be on a sailboat. And they lash him. I mean, he's he's got rope from his ankles clear to his chest to the mast of the boat. Okay? And he's yelling at the top of his lungs, I'm sailing, I'm sailing. Well, he's just tied to the mast. He gets back on shore. And the reason I'm telling you this story is he gets back on shore. He's telling somebody about his sailing ability, that he sails now. And he says something that's always stuck with me. He says, you know, the trick is to just let the boat do the work. I use that same philosophy in my trading. The trick to being successful in trading is just let the trend do the work. We don't have to wrangle around and try to catch the perfect penny. We don't have to play any of that game. Just move with the trend of the market. Let the trend do the job for you. And I do know something about that. <clears throat> Rightway Options has been trading Microsoft. We use a we have used a strategy called a fig leaf trade. It's nothing more than buying a long leap option. This was our entry here last December. We ended we had a 57 and a half call leap option on this one. We ended up getting called away in um, August on this trade. Okay. <clears throat> we sold covered calls against that all the way up. We closed that trade right in here, got called away. At 72 and a half, we could buy it at 50, I think it was 55 and a half now that I think about it. Um, no, it had to have been 57 and a half. 57 and a half, we got called away at 72 and a half. And with the covered calls and everything, we made a 99% return on that trade. There's an example of a weekly chart in just allowing the trend to do the work. Just let it work. And we followed this up. Now, we got back into the trade right over here. And we sold it at earnings, but we made another 30-some percent in just a real quick trade here. And right now, looking at the daily chart, can you guys see what I'm looking at? Microsoft is setting up and could set up another great trade to the upside. Um, TXM, yeah, let's go, let's go there and answer that question. TXM, I'm con concerned about um, overhead resistance. Are you talking about this resistance right here? Okay. Yes, I am slightly concerned about that. Okay. But when we've pulled back and held support and we see buyers stepping back in, isn't this how every stock moves? Think about that for a second. We move up, we pull back. We move up, we pull back. And at every single one of these, there's a buy signal here, below resistance. Okay? The trick to that is, is if you're getting a strong price reaction to price support here, you have to make the assumption it's going to break through right through there. Because the price reaction is right here. That's where the buyers are. Now, if I have a major overhead resistance, and I, what I mean by major overhead resistance is there's, there's a place out there where it's just been stuck there for a long, long time, then I won't trade that trade, okay? Because I won't be able to make enough money in the trade if it just runs up and hits resistance and pulls back. But in this one, if we look at this on a, on a uh, monthly chart, where's the resistance? You got blue sky above. Blue sky. 
And notice how long this has been going up. I get this question all the time, and the question is, well, it's gone up so much, doesn't it have to come down? Or it's gone up so much, it, I just can't trade it. I just, I just know it's got to come down. It doesn't have to, guys. It can just keep trending. Here's a trade that I took in Disney. I'll show you my markups all over here. This was my entry into the Disney trade. This is a weekly chart. That trade lasted four years. Let the trend do the work. Not that hard. Just let the trend do the work. Where we get messed up as traders is we try to we try to wrangle the perfect entry, the perfect setup, the perfect everything, and we end up missing what the chart is telling us. It's telling us a story if we look and learn to read it. And I can tell you that that is not an aberration. I do that a lot. Here's J and J. There was my entry right there into J and J. The multi-year breakout. See the beautiful price wedge here? Higher lows all the way up, breaking resistance. And look at the unbelievable run that makes when it breaks out of a long resistance like that. If I take that back to that time frame, you'll see that on this weekly chart, notice this went months and no black candle, not one. That's the power of just listening to the market and letting it lead you to your trade. Okay, and I'm going to tell you this. This isn't to, to promote or to brag or anything about that. We've had an exceptional year, right? <clears throat> um, Disney was a stock trade, and I, and, and I uh, sold covered calls against it. <clears throat> but I've done that with, like, let's see. Um, here's a trade in UNH right here. This was a leap option purchased here. And if you look, this was about a year long. I didn't want to sell this, but I had no choice. I was running into a theta decay problem right here. So that's one year up, selling covered calls against it all the way up. That was a, over a 200% gain. And you can see, can't you, isn't it amazing when you look at a chart like that and see these big trends, and that they've been around us all the time, but we haven't seen them. We haven't seen them because we're not looking. We're looking at everything except price. And if we learn to follow price, price will tell us where it wants to go if we just allow it to do that. Well, Richard, what I do, I'm, I mean, I trade with a hard stop. Now, I know a lot of people think that's, there's a group of folks out there that think trading with a hard stop is absolutely insane. Um, I think they're insane for not trading with a, with a hard stop. So everything I do has a hard stop. If you use that volatility stop indicator, that volatility stop indicator will keep you in great trends like this. If you make that a weekly chart, notice that did not break the volatility stop until right here. There's the first red dot. That was nearly a year straight up. Straight up. Um, I did roll that out, by the way, but I had to get out of that one trade. Um, but I did roll that out to another um, option, so to answer your question. But obviously that one trade had to be changed out. So how do I handle the small pullbacks? Well, I'll tell you one of the best ways to handle the emotion of pullbacks, and that is to scale out of a trade. If you're in a position that's moving very well, doing what you want it to do as a trade, 
let's say, for example, you're you're um, just you know an average small trader, and you trade three contracts. The stock moves up, you get about a twenty percent return in your account on that trade. Sell one contract. If it moves on up, you get a 30, 35, 40, whatever works for you, percent on, on that trade, sell another contract. It takes the pressure off of the trade. Remember, what we have to do if we're going to be successful long-term traders is make consistent profits. Not home runs. Not out there swinging for 300% winners all the time. That is foolish, and you're going to lose money doing it. It's taking real slow, simple, consistent trades and stacking them up. Now, I have a member, um, he's actually a close friend of mine, who started trading, never traded his entire life in options, okay? Hadn't traded anything in the market for, uh, I think he traded a little bit, well, he bought and sold some stocks back in the 70s. Uh, no joke, it's that long. But it was, and he's not a tech-savvy guy. In fact, he's never run a scan in his entire life, doesn't know how to. <clears throat> he started last November with me, trading options only with a $20,000 account. Okay? I work with him, coach him, all those kind of things, hold him accountable to the rules and his, to his trading. And so far, at this point this year, his account is just a hair breadth from $30,000. And he took $4,000 out this year as just some fun money to kind of reward himself for his trading. He's trading positions no larger than $600. I've limited him to, he can only take trades with $600 at a time. And he's been able to make that kind of result. Now, this year's been an extraordinary year. And what I've done in front of the Right Way Options folks is <clears throat> I set up an account with $10,000. Okay? And... In that $10,000, I trade it right in front of everybody. Every day, every trade I make, I share with, with everyone. Um, stocks, options, doesn't matter. I share my trades. So I've traded that account directly in front of them all year long. Now, it's been an extremely easy year to make money. Extremely easy because how... <clears throat> you got to ask yourself if you've been losing money as a trader, how do you lose money when the market's doing this? It's not because of the market. The problem is you and what you're doing in your trading that's making the mistake because all we've got to do is follow this trend. Okay? So what we have done in that $10,000 account, trading one or two contracts at a time, no more than one or two contracts at a time, as of today, we had a really big winner with Walmart. But as of today, we're up over 90% on that $10,000 account so far this year. Now, I would say a normal year isn't going to be anywhere close to that. Market just doesn't give up that much return all the time, right? If you're trading for small, consistent profits. It's just not going to, going to do that year after year after year. The point is we win about 7 out of 10 trades because we're extremely picky and we make the trade come to us. If this, I only trade the short side of the market, Richard, if the market itself is trending lower. I want to move at the direction of the market. You know, Warren Buff Buffett once uh, made a comment that um, uh, 
when the tide's coming in, it lifts everything. Okay? Have you ever tried to stand and hold back a tide? You know, it can't be done. Um, we can't do it, certainly as retail traders, that we're foolish if we try. And so I just want to move with the direction of the market. So that's one of my rules. If the market is trending up, I'm trading long. I'm not looking for short trades. I'm not interested in short trades. I'm only going to be trading in the direction of the market. Because let's think about it. If the market is trending up, isn't it going to be really hard for stocks trending down to really make you much money? Because if the market's pushing everything up, it's harder for a stock that's bearish to fall. So trade with the direction of the market. It just makes it easier. And it's probably because I'm lazy. I don't want to fight it. I spent too many years trying to fight the market, and I do not want to fight it anymore. I just want to move with it. And it makes trading so much more enjoyable. It's fun. But yes, if the trend is down, Tom, I am going to be trading puts to the downside. I will not be looking for long trades as long as the market is trending lower. Won't be looking for long trades. I will only be looking for short trades. And honestly, I love the short side of the market because we all know we can wipe out months of, of grinding higher really quickly in a short market. Okay. I want to show you a couple more charts. And if you guys have some charts, let me know. Um, I want to show you this chart in Adobe. And I'm going to go to a different screen here. This is all marked up how I'm looking at it, but I want to show you this pop out of the box pattern, how consistent that pattern can be in a trending stock. Now, if you're looking for the pop out of the box pattern, and by the way, I, I do have a whole course on this, but the pop out of the box pattern, um, first, first criteria, it's got to be trending. Stock's got to trend. And then you're looking for these nice tight consolidations. Now, they often form at or near a price support or resistance level, okay? They're often going to form around those areas. We're not trying to anticipate the move. I have no idea. In fact, I don't even want to try and guess if it's going to break out of the top or the bottom. I don't care. I honestly do not care. I wait for it to show me which way it's going to go, and then I follow it. Now you take this chart right here and see how many times this has produced that pattern. And if we move this on out more to current time, this chart just kept going higher and kept producing those kind of patterns as it went. Wasn't that hard to trade? If you look at Adobe right at this very moment, look what's happening in Adobe right here. Anybody see this? Could you put an alert about right here and wait for that to trigger? That's all I do, guys. I wait for the trade. If I throw the volatility stop on there, and look how beautiful that is. By the way, on this, you can see my pink line is already here. That's my alert. That's it. Very simple to trade that chart. And you can do this over and over and over. Now, if you have this chart in the list, all you got to do is wait for it. It will come to you if you allow it to. If you allow it to. This was... We, we broke out here, and remember we ran into that real troublesome time in the, um, a week ago or something like that, and the market just pulled right back. 
Well, it just couldn't follow through. So it just dropped back down here in the box. But notice there's no sellers down here. So even if you entered on that trigger right there, if you entered that candle, you still haven't been stopped out in the trade. Okay. The volatility stop for the day, to answer your question, the volatility stop on this day is not set in place until the day closes. So you always want to use this, the day before or the time period before for your stop loss. Okay, And I'm always underneath it. So for example, if I put a trade in on this right now, I can tell you my stop loss would probably be somewhere about right here. I'm going to be below those. Because what do we know about support? If the stock wants to come back and test support and bounce off of it, at support is where we find new buyers. Yeah, it'll work with any chart. Probably. Any, any chart at all. So it's a comfortable way of trading. You don't, at the end of the day, you don't feel like you've been rushing around. You don't feel like you've been beat up. You don't feel like you've had to chase your tail all day. Beautiful chart. Let's go to the naked here first. Put some marks on this chart. Anybody see a trend? How about the, there was a great big pop on earnings it looks like. We're resting, pulling back to support, pop out of the box pattern forming. You think there's a good chance as we move closer and closer to this trend that we may get a chance for that to pop out? I would say probably high probability. Now, I'm not going to predict whether it's going to go out of the top or the bottom. Honestly, don't care. I just have to wait for it. Nice chart, JK. Very nice chart. Excellent. Just wait for the trade. Yeah, EL is one we've been trading. <laughs> Here's my markups on EL. There's there's the the trade. You can go on uh, stock twits and see that I posted it there. EL setting up again. Nice little pop up and trend, and it's just continuing to go. So there's that trend, and we're just continuing to move higher. Yeah, if it, if it pops out of the bottom, obviously the buyers didn't hold it, right? So I'm not interested in it. It, it either works the way I want to see it work, or I'm not interested in it. DCIX is what I what we call in um, a rounded bottom breakout type pattern. Rounded bottom breakout, stock's been trending lower. This big move here popped it above, okay? Popped it above the 50-day moving average, pulling it back. There's no buy signal here. I'm not interested in this trade at all at the moment. And I'll tell you honestly, this looks more like a stock that got pumped and dumped. Take a look at your volume. Your average volume in this thing stinks on ice. So honestly, not interested in this trade. There's far better trades to be looking at right now. Far better. Um, let me give you one that's looking kind of similar to this that could be setting up. Mo, nice little rounded bottom breakout type pattern. Wedging right here, there's that price resistance that we're watching for that trade to get into that position. Very similar pattern we're trading right now. We're actually in this trade on STX. Coming up out of that, there's the downtrend break. I am never interested in the stock until it's already broken its downtrend and it's proving that it's holding support levels. Until then, not interested. 
we're in this trade here. GM, you can see where we traded this thing. GM broke its trend. Okay. If we look at this chart, I'm not going to probably trade this. Here's why. If I plan this trade, the, the setup is here. You've got a good pattern and everything, but I'm probably not going to trade this trade. Because if I enter this trade here, where's the next resistance? Next resistance is right there, right? Well, if I'm going to get into this trade and my stop loss, here, let me get one of these. If my stop loss is right in here where it needs to be, I'm actually risking more than my potential gain. Now I'm going to take that trade. Make sure you're planning your trades and you know your risk and your potential reward in the trade. Because it wouldn't it be completely logical that this stock pops up here, hits that resistance, and it could turn and just come right back down. So if I can't make at least two times my risk to that first resistance level, I'm not going to take the trade. Okay. Um, good question, Marshall. Um, my support and resistance levels, if I have, it, it all depends on how the price pattern is set up, whether I consider the wicks or tails in the trade. Most of the time, um, if I see a chart that's got a lot of wicks and tails, I just don't trade it. Notice that every chart that I talk about here, where I've traded and I've been in the trade, I have very clean, concise, consistent price action. If I have a chart that's jumping all over the place, low volume, all those kind of things, not interested. What's the most that I will pay for an option? Um, well, I guess as much as I can afford, as long as as long as it's a good option and the and the setup is good. Um, um, and it doesn't have really high implied volatility. So um, I couldn't tell you until I, I mean, it's the chart that leads you to the trade, not the other way around. Okay. STZ. STZ, great chart. We had this ugly candle here, okay? I am watching this chart. You can see it's all marked up. It's trending, okay? But I do not buy without a buy signal, and I will have to make a judgment call on that when I see it. If, you know, let's say, for example, I get a nice buy signal here, but the overall market just is stinking on ice. The overall market's looking shaky or whatever. I'm going to avoid the trade. Okay. But if the market's strong and I get a nice strong candle here, I might take that trade. Okay. Uh, Robin, you may have to um, click the red X and re reboot it because um, we are on STZ. It is showing up here on mine. Sorry, guys. I, I'll, I'll stay as long as you have want me to to look at stocks um, I don't know when I might get cut off here um, HD HD fighting a resistance point I'm gonna have to wait for this to break here's why big move down from there we rallied back I don't know if we're going to fail here and make a double top high so when I have a big sawtooth pattern like that the stock, I'm going to require it to break out and either consolidate above or pull back and hold support and then show me a buy signal. Prove to me that you can hold. Here it failed. 
failed support right here. Couldn't do it. So now I'm going to force it to do what I want it to do before I trade it. And that's what I mean. I'm really picky. Really picky. The chart does what I want it to do or I don't trade it. STM. Boy, this is a real gappy little thing. Um, you can see I've got it marked up here. I haven't been looking at this up in this area. Got a little bit of a support area right here. We've recently went through this little tiny downtrend, popped up, so a little bit of a pennant pattern. We broke through that um, with a gap up today. I think that's probably viable as long as you recognize the fact that your resistance is right up here at this high. And your stop loss needs to be under this support level. If you're okay with that, that's a trade. Red Hat's a beautiful chart. A lot of us are trading Red Hat. There's your pop out of the box right there. MU, we are in the MU trade. As you can see, it's just moving up like we want it to do. We are in the MU trade. We bought it this last trade right here. Okay, on this candle. It's moving on up, breaking out. So far, everything is looking good. I don't know. I think we're up 25% or something on that trade. And use a great looking chart. Um, we're in a, a profitable trade on this right now. And what I did do is we sold a call option against it. We legged into a, um, a uh, calendar spread here. So we have a short call against this as well. We're collecting premium on the other side of this right now as well. TQQQ. TQQQ. <clears throat> when you look at, at charts like this, um, and you got to understand the Ultra Pro is, is double, it's two times, you, there can be some great trading in here. Um, I'll tell you for an option trader, I kind of avoid these. And the reason I, I avoid them is I find I can trade, this will have a, a real high implied volatility in comparison to a straight trade in the VIX or something like that. And because I can trade options, um, I'm going to take the most cost efficient way of trading that, that trade. So I will usually avoid a lot of these. Now, trend is up. If you're looking at this chart for a trade as a stock trader or something like that, trend is up. We had a nice little pullback here. Buyer stepped in. Everything is good there. We have a support level here. Right down in there. That certainly looks tradable to me. You might want to wait and see this, if this will relax and pull back a little bit. We had a 200-point move in the Dow today. What do you think the chances are tomorrow, or at least by Monday, we get a little bit of a rest or pullback in the market? So you might want to wait on that and wait for that next kick up, make it prove. But it, that's up to you. If if the risk reward here is good for you, take the trade. Um, SJM. SJM. Um, Major downtrend. We're just now breaking the downtrend. Okay, shot up here today. Um, and seeing that in some of these defensive stocks, they're starting to do that, coming up out of bottoms. But on this straight move up, would you guys agree that's a parabolic move right there? I sure am not going to chase that. 
if you're in that trade, congratulations. In fact, they'd be taking some profits. They'd be getting out. But if this is going to turn into a good trade for me, then it's going to have to pull back, consolidate, rest, prove that it can hold a support level, and then I'll be interested in buying it. But only at that time. I would not chase that trade right now. John, um, I got a, the question on do you trade the breakouts of TXN and, and Red Hat? Um, you've got to base that off of your risk reward, reward scenario. If you take a look at this trade, look at this chart. What did this chart do? What, it's, what has it been doing? It's been moving up and then consolidating back to trend. Okay? This has a really nice tight box here. That means my stop loss can be right underneath that box. If I throw the vol stop on there, you'll see it. So can I trade this one on the breakout? I absolutely can because I have very little risk in the trade. Now, if you choose to wait to see if it'll hold the top of that box, that's okay with me. Because some do pull back or consolidate up there a little bit before they move on. But I base that trade on what kind of risk do I have in the position. Okay, very close stop, very close to its trend line. It's reacting just as we would expect in this overall pattern. So I would have no problem trading that trade. Can these get stopped up? Can these break down? Yeah, of course I can. Any trade can fail. Any trade can fail. All right, but if I can calculate my risk in here to be um, tolerable for me, then I'll take that trade. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to keep up, but I'm not keeping up very well. Whoops. Baba. We've got one member in our room. He goes by the name of Bob C. Using my method of trading BABA, he's traded BABA this year. This stock only. Now, he's traded other stocks, but in this stock alone, he's up over $120,000 this year. Trading the method that I'm just teaching you, following the trend, waiting for the pullbacks, buying options, letting the stock move up, taking his profits. He's done it over and over and over. He watches this stock like a hawk. Okay, so what do you guys see here? With the volatility stop on there, are we underneath resistance or above support? See how that volatility stop gives us a clue? If I didn't have that line on there, volatility stop is warning us that we're buying a stock near price resistance. You guys like buying stocks at price resistance? I don't. That's one of my rules. I buy stocks at or near price support because this could easily fail right here. So I'm not going to trade that. The only way I'll be able to trade this, again, to fit my rules, is it's got to break through, pull back, hold the support, and then show me a buy signal. Then I'll trade it, just like I did over and over and over through here. Does that make sense? And the volatility stop gives you that really quick look and says, hey, I'm, I'm buying this at price resistance. Probably should wait. Uh, Steve, no. Um, to your question, max of three to five times before it has to break lower? No, not at all. Not at all. Um, trade the trend. Don't try to anticipate a trend break. The trend stays the trend until the trend breaks. Okay? It can just keep going up. You want to see an example of that. Um, I'm in BDX. This weekly chart. This was my entry in the BDX right here. 
Now I've sold parts of this off. I've bought back when it broke down, sold bunches of it off. When it started back up, kept in its trend. Notice that right here, there's a pop out of the box right there. Another one right here. I've essentially been in that trade since 2013. My original buy-in was around 78 bucks. It's now at 221. There is no potential limit how far a stock can go. Just follow the trend. Let the trend do the job. Let the trend do the work. Just follow it. Trade that thing over and over. Now you don't have to buy and hold anything. You find something like this, you can go to the daily chart, hourly chart, or whatever. It's trending. You can find trades in here. Over and over and over, you can find trades in here. So if you find a good weekly breakout or trend, just go to the daily if you want to trade it there and find the trades. Very simple and easy to do. And it doesn't matter if you trade short term. Anybody in here a day trader? Take the Dow and go to a 15-minute chart. Uh, excuse me, a five-minute chart. Here's the breakout this morning. Don't chase the breakout. Let the pullback occur. Wait for your buy signal. Okay? Five-minute chart using the volatility stop. You traded. You got the most biggest part of this move until we fell into chop today. And if you missed that entry right there, can you see this little flag right here? Almost a pop out of the box pattern right there. Here's your entry. There's another one over here. Just follow the trend. What do I identify as a buy signal? <clears throat> well, you're you're in you know a great candlestick teaching room, okay? <laughs> Um, I use candlesticks, and I want to see bullish price action. So what's a buy signal to me? A buy signal to me is buyers reacting to price support. So that can be a bullish engulfing candle. It can be a hammer pattern with a follow-through. It can be a morning star. It can, you know, whatever it is, I'm looking for a bullish reaction. Buyers reacting to price support, pushing the stock up. So it can be lots of different things. Okay? It doesn't it's not a specific one candle or two candles. It's I'm looking for buyers reaction to support. Okay? So it doesn't matter what time frame you trade. This will work. And honestly, you don't need the volatility stop even once you get good at this. You take the volatility stop off, go back to that five-minute chart. Notice it's the same patterns. In fact, they're a little bit easier to see. Same thing, over and over and over. Easy, 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 easy trading. Here you go. That will take you there with the download of the book. ABX. Would you call this price support in here? Okay, so do you want to short a stock that's near or at price support? I don't. So this would not be a short trade for me. Now I will show you where I could trade this short in a couple places. We had a failure up here, right? We failed, moved down, rallied back. Here's the failure at price resistance. Okay? Price resistance is all through there. 
Okay, there's the failure price resistance. This is where I want to short. And I want to short it to price support. Okay, so if this fails through support here, I'm not going to chase that short through that support because how many times do you get false signals? We drop through and then the buyer step in and pick it right back up after it's dropped through. Anybody ever been burned doing that? Um, I can hold both hands up for that. So what I would do is I would let this break down, wait for the rally back, and right in here is where I'd want to short it. If you use the volatility stop on there, you'll see that the volatility stop, I've got to go to the daily chart, the volatility stop gives you those clues here too. So we break down. This actually turned green right here, but you can see that failure pattern. Or here's another potential short place. So very, very simple. This is also, I'm going to go back to the, my naked here. This is also a pop out of the box down. Right there. There's another one right here. You guys see it? Pop out of the box down. Awesome, Greg. Thank you. We do this all the time. This is this is my favorite thing. I can talk about charts forever because I love price action. Literally love price action. It, looking at charts is actually relaxing to me. Um, SEDG, SEDG, big pop on earnings. Got a nice little pennant forming here. It hasn't made a commitment which way it wants to go yet. But it should very, very soon, whether it's going to pop out of the top or pop down. Nice chart, one to watch. Nice pattern there. Beautiful. Keep an eye on that for a trade. FLO. FLO just ran like a like crazy here on their um, report. So let's take a look. You can see I've got this marked up here. And I'm going to go to a weekly to show you my marks here. This is a... Nice big wedge pattern. It's taken a couple years to form this wedge. I'm going to show you here on the weekly that you could have traded this on a weekly using this system. Break the downtrend. What did it do? Came back and tested his support. Anybody see the weekly pop out of the box pattern right here? Right there. Same pattern, weekly chart. So you could have been in that trade. Now, if you're looking at this on the daily, I will tell you the daily is too far gone. Don't chase this. Don't even try to chase this. It's breaking up through this area of resistance right here. Make it prove that it can hold that as support now. And then look for your buy signal. CG. Um, I don't know what you're thinking about on this here, but I see downtrend in an uptrending market. Um, big time failures here at price resistance. Came down here to this price support. It's trying to bounce. The only way I'm going to be interested in CG is it's got to get back into an uptrend. The only way it can do that is break through, hold a higher low, give me a buy signal, give me a trend. Till then, this is a no trade for me. I'm not, I'm not even, I, I spend no time with a chart like that. Z-Y-N-E. Are we at price support or resistance? ZYNE is trending, but it's right at price resistance. Okay. Probably not going to trade that. 
I like the pattern. I like the setup. Could be a trade. If we got a nice little tight consolidation across here, if we built a nice little box right here, nice tight consolidation across here, nice little flag pattern, and then get a pop, I can trade that because I've got a nice tight stop loss. But I have to make sure and plan this trade. Do I Can I make enough money between here and here to make it worthwhile? I can tell you right now, maybe, if I can find a good option on it. Um, but because it's a biotech, I'm guessing um, no. You're going to find that I trade very few biotechs because they are just, they're just so jumpy. They're so dangerous to trade. So I trade very few biotechs. I've got to have a really, really good signal to trade a biotech. I'm way behind, guys, so you may have to post again. QQQ, there's the breakout. It's right here at price resistance. Okay, What's the most important part about a big move like this? Follow through. Can it follow through? Q's look higher. Nothing, nothing about this says that we're moving down. As we're moving higher. ZAGG. ZAGG trending up. Yeah, beautiful trend up. A little monkey business that went on right in here. Recovered that nicely. Everyone see the pop out of the box pattern right here? Boink. Nice trending chart moving up. I think probably um, it could rest in here a little bit. This may rest or pull over here a little bit. So I would wait for the next entry if you're not into that trade. If you're not in it right now. If you're in it, I'd stay in it. Potash. Morningstar pattern. Pretty darn close to right at price resistance. Still in the downtrend. Trying to break out of there. So right now, it's a no trade for me. That price resistance. This has got to break through. Hold up here. Consolidate. Pull back. Something like that. Hold. Prove. Then show me a buy signal. Then maybe. Z-I-O-N. Oof, this is just a mess. Um, when I see a chart that's that's like this, that's just full of wicks and tails, um, flips back and forth between up candle, down candle, up candle, down candle, up candle, down candle, um, I usually just pass. Okay. Now, this is in a downtrend, and we're showing a failure pattern right here. That's price resistance, kind of a double level of trouble right there for the stock. We're showing a bit of a failure pattern, dark cloud cover here. Um, I would watch this closely. If you're long this, be really careful because this could sink to a new low. Um, if I were wanting to get long this, it's going to have to break out of here, hold the support, and then show me an entry. O-M-E-R. Downtrending. We had a nice big rally here recently. Still below this downtrend. Right at price resistance. This is going to have to break out to be a trade. I would not trade it here. When you see a chart like this and you notice that downtrend like that, does this guy thing give you pause at all? Every time we've come up here, we get rejected. Now, isn't it funny, as a trader, we look at it this time and think this time is different, and that we can predict that it's going to be different this time. 
But this is definitely showing me here, right here, we could easily turn right back around and come down. So the only way I'm going to be interested in this trade is it's got to break through and then prove it can hold support and then show me a buy signal. Then I might be interested, but not until then. Is this making some sense to you guys? Is this helping? Because this is critical stuff. If you can learn to see that price action like that, it will change your life. It will change your trading forever. Because instead of fighting the market, we're letting the market work for us. We're working with it. We're not fighting it. We're letting the market lead us. We're not trying to predict it or any of that kind of stuff. We're just letting it follow. Letting it tell us where it wants to go, and then we move in to trade it. SSKN. Uh, yuck. Um, run. Look at another chart. Um, I wouldn't trade this with your money. Seriously, uh, why look at a chart like this when there are so many good charts to look at? This is, don't waste your time with that. This, is, this looks like heartache written all over it. Stay away. KEM, breaking down. By the way, here's one of those great failure patterns right here at price resistance. Tried to rally up. Couldn't do it. Boink. Okay. So what does it look like here? Well, we failed this price support. 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 Okay, so what do you think is going to have to happen before I would have any interest in this trade whatsoever? It's going to have to show me a new uptrend. It's going to have to break higher, hold a support level, then show me a buy signal to give me the first sign of an uptrend. Till then, not interested. And by the way, we traded the heck out of KEM in this period here. CBRR, nice uptrend. Okay, a little funky up here. Let's look back and see if we can see why it got a little funky right in here. Very easy to spot when we pull the chart back. There's our the problem why we got a little shaky right here. Okay, we break through, came back to trend, trying to move up. Okay, here's my problem with a trade like this, um, and, and here comes my the real anal part of me, um, the being really picky part. If I draw this in here, can you guys see right here that's price resistance? Somewhere in here. Now, this needs to be a fat line, not a real skinny line. But somewhere in right in this area is a price resistance area. Okay. So be because this failed through this support and rallying back to that resistance area, I would look at this as the potential that it can fail at that resistance. Okay? So I'm going to require this to break out before I trade it. Um, I did ZIGG just a second ago, didn't I? <clears throat> yeah, ZIGG, nice little pop out of the box moving up. If you're in the trade, stay it. Stay in it. If you're not in the trade, I would wait for the next entry signal. CBOE, we have traded this and traded this and traded this thing this year. CBOE, beautiful uptrend, continuing to move, just beautiful. Um, it's starting to get a little bit um, uh, funky. You know, I think it might be getting just a little bit of stress at this altitude. Um, but right now, we've got this nice little breakout. It's trying to hold that. 
move that up. I see this as a pop out of the box forming. If that forms up, gives me a breakout, I'm all for it. When you put a trend line on there, you can almost look at these as it's really simple to see um, how sometimes we'll just break higher and then we'll move back to the trend. So this was a nice big change off of that off of that test down here. This may just consolidate right here before it can break higher. Move closer to its trend before it moves on up. Okay. DEO. Uh, yuck. Um, lots of gaps, lots of wicks and tails. Um, I think there's better charts to look at. You do have a wedge pattern here that's forming. Um, I think before I would be interested in this, it's going to have to prove that it can break out of there and hold it as support. But be real careful with a chart like this. Um, this looks like one of those eye test things, doesn't it, where you can see patterns. Um, op I mean, big open gaps, lots of wicks and tails. Um, doesn't look like a great chart for me. Um, but, you know, if you like it, you know, wait for it to prove. Wait for it to prove. Give you a buy signal after it can prove that it can break out of here. This resistance level has held it down now since September. Okay? So make it break out of there and hold. Because if it's going to trend, it's going to trend. Just let it do its job and show you that. Yeah, I, under, I understand that, and I understand it's a foreign. And that's why we get all of these um, big gaps and weirdness in here. If I were going to trade this, and I'll tell you how I'd do it, if I really wanted to trade this, I would start looking at a two-day, three-day, kind of like that three-day chart. Four-day, five-day. Yeah, I'm probably going to go with that three-day. Three-day brings all that together, nice, consistent in that trading. So I'm going to make this show me the trade I want it to show me. Can you guys see in that three-day that this is forming up, a three-day pop out of the box pattern? And then if I find it on a three-day, I'm going to manage it on a three-day. That helps me avoid all that emotion of the wickiness, the, the uh, gappiness. I, it, it slows it down so I can trade it in a nice, concise fashion. Does that make sense, Jay? Or AJ? UMC. There's your price resistance. Finally starting to break its downtrend here that it's been in. Nice little wedge forming. So you'll have to decide whether you want to buy this in here below this price resistance so close or if you want to wait for this to pop out. For me, I can tell you, I would probably wait for some kind of a pullback and a, and a buy signal. Again, I'm really picky on my trades. Really, really picky on my trades. SKYW. You, you know, look at that chart. And then think about the charts that I've been showing you as trades. The difference in the consistency and the smoothness of how they're moving. We don't have to trade every chart out there. We don't have to try and fight every chart. We want to look for the better ones. Showing nice trend, deliberate price action, okay, to trade them. SkyWest, nice little breakout here, moving higher. There's our trend in this trade. Everything looks good here. Um, I would not chase it necessarily here. I suspect it may rest here soon or consolidate. I would wait for the next entry into that trade. Nice chart.
HPQ, HPQ breaking down. You see, I've already got it marked up here. Broke down, failed support, challenging resistance right here. So far, it hasn't broken through. Um, HP does have a trend here that it's holding. So if it can break back above this resistance area, break back above, hold it as support or consolidating here, I'll be a buyer if it pops out of that. But I'm going to make it come to me. I'm not going to guess that that's going to happen. Because what I see here, it could just as easily, about a 50-50 chance, right? It could do that. FMC. Price resistance, morning star pattern currently in the chart. Trying to make this little trend right here happen. This is going to have to break out for me. Too many tests up here. Look at all the tests up here where we failed. So now it's got to break out of here. Nice little wedge pattern on it could. It could break out. Um, how many stocks do I trade at any one time? Um, it really kind of depends on the market. I'm willing to trade a lot of trades. I usually, I trade pretty small uh, when I trade. Normally, um, most of my trades that I do, I only trade about 3% of my account into any one trade. If the market is doing really good, I will cheat that higher, up around 4 or 5% sometimes. But the majority of time, I'm trading only about 3% of my account in any one trade. So I can trade, and because I trade options and stock, um, I will trade, um, you know, high points. I can run 20 or 30 trades at a time because I may have credit spreads all over the market. Um, and directional trades and calendars and all kinds of stuff. But I've been doing it so long, I'm very comfortable at it. What I will tell you is for most people that I work with, that I train, um, somewhere between about five and seven trades is where most people um, are comfortable. And I recommend, you know, I see a lot of people trying to trade twos and threes. Um, I recommend you getting up into this area as quickly as you can where you're running around this area in number of trades or, or more so that you have an opportunity to win because some things are going to lose, some things are, are not, but just stick with that kind of a thing. Hey, thank you, JK. I appreciate that. Yeah, they produce that list every month. That's an awesome list to go from. Real easy to do. Let me show you um, one of my scans in here real quick. Um, I built this in front of everybody. I want to show you how simple my scan. If I'm going to scan, um, um, it's going to be something like this. Okay. Now, in the scan, if we look at the scan, there's three criteria. I built this for someone who, who had a, a criteria they wanted lower price stocks. They didn't like anything below ten dollars. So we went from ten to fifty, asked for a million dollar or a million shares. One million shares. Traded. And the 34 EMA trending 20 days. That's the only three criteria in the stock. Okay? Or in the scan. And then what I do is I change out these columns and I have my own custom columns that I use that have those sorts in here. So I'm going to put that those custom columns on there, and then I'm just going to take this entire scan. You can see it's got 128 stocks. I'm going to sort this real quick by stocks that are trending 20 days and that are above the volatility stop. And I'm going to start flipping down through here and see if we find a trade. Anybody like DYN? Platforming here, showing a trend. Could be a pop-out-of-the-box pattern. How about this one, P 
TPH. Nice trend. Platforming could be moving up. How about this one right here, HFC? Right here in this simple scan, I can find more qualified stocks than I can possibly trade. So the qualifying stocks have to be trending, moving with the direction of the market, having nice, concise price action, respecting support and resistance, and, and respecting its trend. And from there, all I have to do is set up the trade and wait for the next entry. That simple of a scan can produce trade after trade after trade. You guys see that right here? Look how easy that was to identify. Trade after trade, pop out, pull back, hold support, buy signal. The pattern I've been talking about all night long, pop out, pull back, buy signal. This one's broke too much of support. Um, um, still trending, but I'm going to require this to probably break back out of resistance. How about IGT here? IGT took off like a rocket shot. You can see I've got it marked up. Looking at this big breakout up here, now this needs to rest or pull back to provide us an opportunity to maybe trade it. But that's how simple it is to build a qualified watch list. I build this watch list of good trending stocks that have concise price action, and then I wait for the trade. You can see that zag is in here. Look at all these charts in here that could be very good potential trades. And all we have to do is wait for them, like Cree, that we're in right now, right way options. SQ, that we're in right now, right way options. Let me give you a chart that you guys might really like. That's setting up right now. VMW. Yes, um, how to make that scan is in the ebook. How to build a qualified watch list is in that ebook. Yes. Um, VMW, right here. Beautiful potential trade. Now, um, I just had a PM to show people how to add volatility stop to the charts. So, on this chart, you can see volatility stop is not here. I don't have it on this chart. So all I have to do is I, I have to, I can right click on the chart and just say add a plot. Comes over to my list of things that are here and I just start typing volatility. Right there it is, volatility stop indicator. Click on it, add it to my chart and then I edit this. Just say 10 days, 1.5. Okay, and there's my volatility stop. Now all I've got left to do is change my colors, whatever color you want on here. Uptrend, let's make it green. Downtrend, let's make it red. And then I'm going to always pull this, um, pull this back because I don't, I don't want it to be so bright it distracts me from the candles. I want to see the candles. So right there, that's how easy it was to add volatility stop right in your package. By the way, can you guys see this? how great this pattern is right here? There's that beautiful pop out of the box pattern. Break a resistance. Rest. Pull back. Buy signal. Boink. Yeah, Choppy, that's that volatility stop indicator. That's in the ebook. You download the ebook. It's going to teach you or show you um, how to set that up in TC2000. It's also going to give you a PDF on how to set it up in your TOS charts. If you use something other than that, I highly recommend you ask you know, whoever you chart with because it's a real simple indicator. They should be able to code it very, very easily for you. Also in that ebook is a PDF on how to create a qualified watch list to do what I'm doing. Trending charts, just follow the trend. 
There's also a link in there to my YouTube channel, my YouTube channel where you can go and watch four, excuse me, five videos, 20 minutes long, to get more education on how to do this. It's all free. Just get the get the ebook. It's all there. Okay. The code for my trending 34 EMA is also in the book. Okay. So you I mean I'm giving you everything. I think VMW is viable right now. I mean, wouldn't you guys say? The question, you know, the question is, is it, what do we do with this? Um, let me get rid of this. Um, what, what's the stock done? Broke through resistance. It's pulled back, tested the support. Fire stepping in. Right near trend. So where's our stop loss? Our stop loss is going to be really, really close. Look how tight that is. Can this fail and be a losing trade? Absolutely. But so could have this one. It's the same setup here. No, it's the same setup. Broke through resistance. Pulled back, consolidated, popped out of the box. Exact same trade right there. That's setting up right here. So I think VMW is tradable right here. Just make sure you set your stop loss, protect yourself in the trade, and you're ready to go. A choppy, as I explained before, they're showing you price support and resistance. Okay? So see how we're pulling back here? This is showing that there's price resistance right here, right where I drew that line. So if you're inexperienced at, at resistance and finding support, it's warning us that we're trying to buy this right at resistance. Okay? And that's all it is. And now, if you're shorting, if you've got a stock that's downtrending, let's say you're looking at like um, CMG that's been a, just an absolute pig, okay? Falling lower, that's going to tell you where to place your stop losses in the downtrend. The uptrend is going to tell you where to place your stops in the uptrend. That simple. I think we did GE already. Let's take it. No, no, we didn't do GE. Um, we did GM. Um, um, run. There's nothing here. Um, the only way I, I would even ever consider trading this, and, and I wouldn't do it because this is just all down. There's not a good story here. Um, is If I absolutely am forced to find a trade in here, I'm going to have to go into real short-term charts to find any kind of a trend. And there's no trend here. Not even on a five-minute chart is there a decent trend. Not even in the least bit interested in this chart. This is a, a pig. Leave it alone. Walk away from it. Don't get involved in trying to pick bottoms. We use, have a joke in the room, you know, picking a bottom just leaves you, it's embarrassing and leaves you with st stinky fingers. Um, don't do it. Stay away from that. The market is trending up. Why mess with a stock? that's doing this in an uptrending market. Go with the direction of the market. It's so much easier to just move with the direction of the market rather than trying to predict when this is going to stop going down. MOS. MOS, we are actually in a trade on MOS and we're down on this position right now in MOS. MOS. MOS had this great little break of resistance, pull back. We got in here. 
and then we got this pulling back. So we may get stopped out on this trade soon. If it doesn't correct here real quick, we'll be out of the trade. Okay. It's not looking particularly healthy at the moment. And it just gave us a false read here. So I lose, I lose on trades just like you. I lose on trades all the time. It's just a part of doing business. The trick is win more of them than you lose, and you got it made. JK, but G, yeah, but G, he's a good company. It's got to go up, right? <laughs> Let me show you one of the biggest mistakes. I told you about that friend of mine, Mike Peterson. Um, he made that mistake early on. He saw this chart in UAA on this big gap down, and he bought it. Because he said, well, <laughs> for crying out loud, these guys are, it's too big of a company. It's got to go up. Um, no, it doesn't. One of his biggest losses ever since he's been trading, and that thing just keeps going down. Don't waste your time with a chart like this. If the market's trending up, go with the trend. It's easier. Way easier. Verizon. Ugly. Ugly. You can see I had an alert up here because of this wedge, and I was waiting to see if it would pop up. Never triggered. Fell out of the price wedge. Just diving. My guess is probably going to come down here into this low before it's done. Um, maybe even lower. Let's look. Yeah, there's a, this is a pretty good price support in here. There's, there's no trade there. Why mess with that chart? Art H has been a really nice stock, and we've traded this through this area here. Had an ugly, ugly um, pattern here. It looked like it was just going to break down like crazy, but notice it, it didn't break that support, and now we get this earnings report that popped it up. So in this trade, don't chase this. Just wait for the next pullback. Wait for the next entry into the trade. This happens a lot on trades. Take, um, um, let's see, what's the name of that stock? All of a sudden I can't think of it. Um, take a look at Microsoft here. Big pop-up, don't chase that. Notice all Microsoft is doing is chopping, going sideways, coming back to trend. We're going to watch this for another entry here. Okay, the same thing would be true with um, Intel. Intel. There's my alert right now for Intel. Popped up on earnings, ran up, pulling back. Everybody see the pop out of the box pattern here, potentially forming? I'm okay with this if it continues to pull back, come clear down into here, as long as it holds trend. And I'm going to watch and wait for this trade to come to me. Watch and wait. This helping you guys? AAL, double top high. Um, honestly, would have absolutely no interest in this chart in a rising market. Um, we just continue to break support levels and move lower. Um, and what I see here is actually the potential of a head and shoulders pattern, don't you? The big ugly ghost. It does have a bit of a trend here. Really ugly trend, though. Actually, I would put it almost like that. I mean, I think this could be a failure point right here. Hey, you guys are welcome. You guys are welcome. If there's anything I can ever do to help you guys um, improve your trading, you know, feel free to ask. We're, I, I, 
I, I truly love um, reading price action and, and looking at charts. So um, I'm always willing to help folks as, as much as possible to help them improve their trading because I've been there. I, I've been went through that struggling point where it was just ugly, um, where I was ready to quit. And um, when I finally turned the corner, when I got simple in my trading, it, it just made it great. Tesla. Tesla, ugly. Ugly, ugly, ugly. You see I've got it marked up. I get questions on Tesla all the time. If I were going to trade Tesla, I'd be looking for a short. We're downtrending. Okay. That's all there is here, downtrend. It's ugly. Be looking for a short. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate you saying that. Love to help. Um, PLSE. PLSE. Really light. I mean, only a couple hundred thousand shares traded um, a day. A little bit light in volume. That's why we're so wicky. Um, you know, just about every other day we reverse from a, a bullish candle to a bearish candle. Um, I would tell you just off of that, I would probably would just pass on this personally. But if you really want to trade this, that there is a trend. Okay. There's a price support right in here. You know, throw the vol stop on, you'll be able to see it. Okay, so this would have to produce a buy signal in here before I'd be interested in it. Okay. But it's a really low volume stock. You're going to have to be really careful with this. Um, I do think there's better stocks to look at, easier to trade. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Any any other questions I can answer for you on on trading this way? Um, hopefully, you can see. You know, one of the reasons I became a trader is for the lifestyle of of being a trader. Um. I didn't want to have to strap myself to a computer full time. I wanted the freedom to be able to live that lifestyle. That's that's why I became a trader. And so when I simplified my charting and went to to you know charts, you know like the um, how about a PayPal? PayPal has just been a trade forever for us. I mean, it just, you know, how do you, how do you lose on a chart like that? Concise price act in action. It's not full of wicks and tails. It, it's leading us right up. And so um, when you start identifying charts like this, you're trading you're able to relax, you're able to breathe because we're not fighting the market. We're not fighting to find an entry. We're not chasing anything. I, I have no reason to chase a, a trade. I have no reason to actually rush because if I build my watch list of stocks that are doing this, I just have to wait for the next entry. It really is that simple. Well, Bob, when when the market goes sideways, w wouldn't you agree that there's always stocks going up? So if you have trending stocks, guess what you're going to find? If you have a list of qualified trending stocks, you're going to find stocks going up in the in a sideways pattern. Now, if that pattern starts to roll over, you know, if your your sideways market starts to roll down, then I'm going to shift over and I'm going to start looking for short trades. But not until it rolls over. Consolidation in the market does not mean bearishness.
it's just resting. It's, it's building energy. We don't know if it's going to break higher or lower. But we've got stocks that always have some kind of momentum to move with the market. So I'm going to stay with those. I'm not going to worry about those that aren't. I'm going to move with those that are moving. Um, I hope you guys can see that what I do is much more relaxing. It's really simple. Um, do I use buy limit orders? Um, when I was working full time, I, I use stop limit orders all the time. A buy stop limit order. Because I couldn't watch the market during the day. I was building houses, okay? So I would look at a chart and I would look at the potential entry and I would use a stop limit order to enter that trade. So for example, if I were looking at a chart and this the stock was $20, at the close of today, and I'm looking at it, you know, the night before, that's when I look at it, I would usually add 25 cents to that, and that would be my buy order, my stop buy, and then I would add about another 25 cents to that, um, well, I should have just made that 50, so 2050 would be my limit. And I know you're going to ask me, well, was it always 25 cents? No. If you're trading a $5 stock, it might be 15 cents. It might be 10 cents. Whatever looks, looks right in the price action. But that way I could set an order with a conditional stop loss. As soon as the order filled, I w my stop loss would drop in. So I could set these orders the night before, shut off my computer, not look at it for the whole day and just let the market do the work for me. If the stock rallied up, triggered my order, I know the stock is moving up when I got into it. But if it gaps up big, I don't want it because it increased my risk in the trade. So I don't want it, and I wouldn't trade that. So that's what the limit does, prevent you from getting caught in a big gap up. Uh, what index do I watch to determine the direction of the market? I look at all of them. Um, if you guys go to my YouTube channel, just go to YouTube, Right Way Option, look, search for Right Way Options. Um, you could um, subscribe there. It's free. Every morning I put out a video. and You can see what I do. Every morning I go through um, the four um, major index ETFs. And... I'm looking for clues in here in the trade. Okay, So if you watch my video from this morning, you'll see in my video this morning, I talked about the potential because in the futures market pushing up, I said they could set off a short squeeze today and really move the market higher. Um, I would argue that's what happened. They had a short squeeze. All through here, if you watch my videos of the days before, I was telling people to be cautious. Don't overtrade the market. Stop, you know, relax a little bit. Let's wait. You'll see that in those morning videos. And I do that with every index, and I look at the what's going on in earnings. I look at what's going on in uh, the news events that are coming that day. I do that in about a 10-minute video, and it's posted in YouTube, Facebook, Stock Twits, um, tw um, Twitter, and um, um, for people to see, and it's free to everyone. So I do that every single morning. You can subscribe to one of those, and you'll get it. Um, it doesn't cost you a thing. It's just my preparation for the day, and um, I happen to share it with everyone. Um, I, I'm a really big believer that preparation is far more important than anything else. So if you're prepared to trade, if you're mentally ready to trade, if you see the market for what it is, okay, don't put your bias into it. Just look at the price of the can what the candles are telling you, what the price is telling you. Listen to the flow of the market, and you'll improve your trading. So when I do that preparation every morning, it sets my mind for the day. What what am I doing? I mean, I, I can tell you that there's days when I, the stocks, the market may be showing all kinds of signs of ripping higher, wanting to go higher. 
but I will not trade because I'm below support, I mean below resistance, I'm all those kind of things. I'm really picky about that. And because of that, I have a really high winning percentage. You know, one thing that was really hard for me to learn as a trader is you don't have to trade every day to be successful. In fact, I would tell you that if you slow down your trading activity, you will likely start making more money. If you're pickier about the trades you'll take, you will start making more money. Not every day is a good day to trade. Not every day is a good day to enter positions. Don't fight the market. Move with the market. And if you put that mindset on, it's so much easier to when you look at that and, and look and remove your bias and say, you know, the market's just not setting up today. I, I think I'm going to set back. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. So when you when you learn to just move with the direction of the market, not fight it, not not play those games, it just gets so much easier. Um, you know, you can breathe a little bit. We we use something in the room, we say it all the time. Remember that cash is a position. And oftentimes cash is one of your best positions. You don't have to be trade every day to be successful. What you do need to do to be successful is focus on quality trades rather than a quantity of trades. Right? Look for the quality trades that are moving with the direction of the market. Don't fight the market. Don't predict it. Don't predict where a turn is going to happen. Don't predict support. Don't stop predicting. Let the market tell you where it wants to go. You see, we're not big enough to fight any of this. We don't even rank the flea on the hind end of an elephant in the market. Okay? It's those big players. It's the big institutions that move the market. So let them show you where they want to go. Let them show you, and then you just follow. Take the ride. Don't predict it. Don't anticipate it. Don't do anything. Just let them show you. And if the stock doesn't show you, walk away. There's no need to fight the trend because we're not big enough to do that. Okay? And thank you, AJ. I do try to be very transparent. I have nothing to hide. I really don't. Um, I'm a real simple guy. I'm a real simple trader. And um, I share every trade I make with members, I, every single trade. Um, stocks, options, whatever it is, I share it. Um, because I have nothing to hide. Yeah. <laughs> and I do trade naked. That's right, Glenn. Thank you guys. Very much appreciate it. Did everyone get the link for the ebook? Make sure you get that. Um, and if there's you know anything that I can I can do for you guys, please feel free to ask. Um, hit me up. Um, you can catch me on any of those social media things. I do try to answer those. Um, um, I'm always willing to try and help out a fellow trader to do better in their trading, to to turn that over and be profitable. So thank you all very much. Uh, Stephen, thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here tonight. I really do appreciate that. Um, um, means it, Honestly, it's humbling to me <laughs> to be able to be here. So thank you very much for inviting me. I, I do appreciate it. And thank you to everyone for being so kind. Um, I, I do appreciate that as well. Thank you, Doug. I mean, this was good stuff. As you can see, everybody... Yeah, I I thought my charts were simple. Doug exemplifies the the basic rule of investing: keep it simple. And as you can see, 
everything he has on his chart or every, every little thing he has on his chart is just mere common sense to analyze what the chart is telling you. So, Doug, you made this clear, crystal clear, uh, where the good trades are. We appreciate that. So, Thank you very much. Yep. I've, uh, there's lots of people out there showing uh, techniques, and every time I hear about Doug's uh, uh, feedbacks, it's 100% positive. Everybody likes what he does. So with that, everybody, have a good evening. Doug, thank you very much. A lot of good information, and you you were more than generous as far as your description and your time. So greatly appreciate that. With that, everybody, have a thank good you, evening. Everyone. Yep, we'll see you bright and early in the chat rooms.